Okay, example 6.4. We've got two surfaces here, one a paraboloid and one a sphere uh, that intersect in a curve. I'm going to draw that curve in black there. And uh, we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the curve at a given point, uh, 2, 1, 2. Okay, so uh, there's the tangent line there in green. Now, our, what's our answer going to look like? It's going to be the equation of a line. We know how to write down a line. It's x, y, z is some starting point plus a parameter t times a direction vector. Starting point, got 2, 1, 2, okay? Direction vector a, b, c. That's what we don't know. We don't know the direction of this tangent line. So a valid approach, something you could do in principle, would be to find a parameterization of the curve. Um, you could do that. X of t, y of t, z of t, you write those down, and then uh, you'd work with those two equations. And then you'd take the derivative to get the tangent vector. Now that could work in principle. It gets a little messy. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do something else. Now, this problem comes on the heels of uh, some tangent plane questions. In fact, a couple of exercises earlier, we found equations for tangent planes to exactly this paraboloid and exactly this sphere at exactly the point 2, 1, 2. So let's see if we can leverage our knowledge of those two tangent planes. We'll write them down in a minute here. So first, let's just note that top equation is the equation of the sphere, uh, sorry, the paraboloid, and uh, the bottom equation is the equation of the sphere. Okay, so there's the line. Uh, the green tangent line, and we're trying to figure out what its equation is. Now, let's just draw uh, a tangent plane to the paraboloid. So let's draw it in red here. Try to draw this clearly. There's a, there's a red tangent plane uh, to the paraboloid at the point 2, 1, 2. Okay? Now let's also draw a tangent plane in blue here to the sphere at the point 2, 1, 2. So now, uh, you know, emanating from the point 2, 1, 2, we've got a green tangent line to the curve, a red tangent plane to the paraboloid, and a blue tangent plane to the sphere. Now, take a minute, pause the video if you need to, convince yourself that this green tangent line, it's got to be in the red tangent plane to the, to the paraboloid. The green line is tangent to the curve, so it's tangent to the paraboloid at 2, 1, 2. And uh, the red tangent plane is tangent to the paraboloid at 2, 1, 2. So the green line has, has got to sit in that red tangent plane. Similarly, it's also got to sit in the blue tangent plane. The green line is tangent to the curve, so it's tangent to the sphere at 2, 1, 2. No. The blue plane is tangent to the sphere at 2, 1, 2. So the green line has got to sit in both of those planes. Now, let's recall, let's write down the equation of the tangent plane to the paraboloid at the point 2, 1, 2. Looks like this. 4x minus 2 plus 4y minus 1 minus 3z minus 2 is 0. Let's also write down the tangent plane to the sphere at 2, 1, 2. There it is. 2 times x minus 2 plus y minus 1 plus 2 times z minus 2 is 0. And let's jot down the normal vectors for each of these planes. For the red plane to the paraboloid, normal is 4, 4, minus 3. For the blue plane to the sphere, uh, normal is 2, 1, 2. Now, the geometric insight which allows us to solve this problem is that the tangent line to the curve lies in both of these planes. So what does that mean? It means the direction vector, ABC, which that's what we don't know, if the tangent line lies in both planes, the direction vector of the green line, ABC, is orthogonal to both of those normal vectors that define the plane. Okay, So let's write down what that means. It means that if you take the dot product with the unknown of the unknown vector ABC with each of these normal vectors, you're going to get zero. So here we have two equations and two unknowns. Now, by the way, if you're familiar with the cross product, uh, you could go ahead and take the cross product of each of those normal vectors. And that would give you a third vector, which is orthogonal to each of the normals. The answer you'd get by taking the cross product is exactly the vector we'll write down in a minute or so here. Uh, but let's just say we're not familiar with the cross product. You can still do this. This is just two equations for two unknowns. Now let's pick 
one of the equations and uh, solve for one of the variables. So I'm going to pick that first equation and I'm going to solve it for C in terms of A and B. And I'm going to take that result and plug it into the second equation and simplify a bit. Multiply both sides by 3 there. and We'll simplify this. Now that's an equation, just A and B. So let's rearrange it and we'll find B in terms of A. Now let's take that B and plug it back up into C there. Now what we're going to get is an expression for C that involves only A. C is minus 4A over 11. So whatever A is, B is minus 14A over 11, and C is minus 4A over 11. So two equations, three unknowns. So we have B and C in terms of A. That's just the way I did it. You, might, you could have done it a different way. Now we have some freedom. Let's choose a value for A that's going to make our lives uh, a little simple. here. You can choose whatever you want for A. You might choose 1. Um, better not choose 0 because then everything will be 0. It'll be kind of trivial. Uh, let's choose A equal to 11. That way we'll get rid of the fractions. And uh, the fact that we have some freedom here, it amounts to the fact that we don't care what the length of the direction vector is. It's just the direction of it. So we have some freedom over A. Now the direction vector of the tangent line then is ABC is 11 minus 14 for B minus 4 for C. And uh, then the equation of the tangent line for the, the curve um, of intersection at the point 212, there it is. Very good.